You're listening to the Better for America podcast presented by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber, and this is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. With us today is Andy Mangione. Andy Mangione is our Executive Vice President of AMAC Action. AMAC Action is our advocacy arm. And folks, you need to understand that AMAC was formed to do the very things that AMAC Action is doing each and every day. We're working at the state level. We're working at the federal level. None of it would be possible if it weren't for you. We've got over 2 million AMAC members that have been helping us. So we're going to turn to Andy. I've got some really great questions. We want to talk to Andy a little, little bit about the election reform and, and election integrity process because we've been doing so much work uh, to that end. Folks, we've also got our eye on what's happening at the border, at the southern border. We see the atrocities there. We see the human trafficking and the terrible things that are happening to um, to people. Uh, we, we recognize that a lot of work needs to be done there. So stay tuned. Uh, and if you haven't yet, downloaded the AMAC News app, I want to encourage people to please do that because AMAC is bringing to you the real news, the kinds of news, the kind of news that you won't hear in mainstream media. And we've really been gaining so much popularity. We have brought on, geez, dozens of professional writers and journalists. So we're bringing to you the information as it's uncovering. And, uh, you know, just be sure to go to our website, download the news app. And if you haven't joined or renewed your AMAC membership, please do so. Go to amac.us. Uh, again, with me here is Andy Mangione. Andy, thank you so much for being with me here today. My pleasure, Rebecca. This is great. Uh, Andy, here we are already in June, right? And it seems like uh, the January election just came and went yesterday, right? But on the same hand, or on the other hand, I should say, it feels like the country has changed so, so much. And I know that you have been so busy. AMAC has been busier than ever. Uh, AMAC Action has been so active at the state level, working to reform the election process this year. So, Andy, how has that effort unfolded uh, for the advocacy team? And share with our listeners some of our great successes. I'm happy to, Rebecca. Uh, just to underscore your comment that the election is still very much fresh in the minds of AMAC members, the presidential election. They are engaged and they are active to the point where when we polled them as we were setting our legislative agenda for 2021, they overwhelmingly instructed us to put election integrity and reforming the election process on our legislative agenda for 2021. We are a member-driven organization. We take our marching orders from our members with regard to our advocacy. So of course, we made election integrity and reforming the election process a priority for this year. So where does this battle take place? It is not taking place at the federal level. We are witnessing activity in states throughout the country to reform elections. And as a matter of fact, they are racing to reform elections to stay ahead of what the federal government wants to do with HR1 and S1. And I know we've talked about that on this podcast before. So what have we done? We have uh, listened to our members and we've made this a priority and we're getting our feet wet. Actually, we're getting our feet soaking wet uh, on the state level <laughs> to fight election integrity. And we've had a lot of success so far. Yeah, I'm going to ask for you to share with me some more of the details, but for those of you that may not um, recall exactly how horrendous this bill, S-1, uh, uh, it, is, it is labeled for the People's Act. It is really uh, a terrible, terrible bill. It's not for the people. It federalizes our elections, uh, and we don't need the federal government meddling in state business and how each state determines how they're going to run their elections. Now, one of the things that I saw, Andy, on the news, as I'm, you know, I, I, I do often watch the news and I get my news through a lot of different media outlets, you know, whether it be uh, television, uh, internet, um, certainly a lot of print and so forth. Uh, but what I've been hearing a lot of is, um, you know, how um, how restrictive some of these states are becoming over their, their election uh, laws. And yet, when you really look at what they're doing, they're not restricting people from get going to the ballot. They're not. They're not trying to prevent people from getting out to vote. They're not. A, they're not targeting minority groups so that they have um, 
uh, less opportunity to vote. Rather, what they're doing is they're protecting your vote, my vote, the minority vote. They're protecting our votes. How are they doing that? By ensuring that there can that, that fraud is minimized so that things are done in a very um, transparent manner. And if we don't have free and fair elections, then we're not a government that is uh, for the people, by the people. The people need to elect uh, those representatives into, into office, and the people's vote needs to matter. So that just gets under my skin that we're hearing uh, on mainstream media and through mainstream uh, that, um, oh, look at these big bad states such as Texas that are that are you know trying to make it more difficult for people to vote. We know that's not the case. And uh, I would like for you to share with me, Andy, um, how have AMAC members actually participated in the election integrity process? If you can give us some examples of what we've been doing in a handful of states. I'm happy to. And Rebecca, Thanks. AMAC members agree with you. If we don't have free and fair elections, we don't have a representative republic. AMAC yeah. members are attuned to that. They're sensitive to that. And they're passionate about their their sacred right to vote. They've told us that. So they've been very engaged. AMAC Action has asked members in states across the country to get involved. And we really didn't have to ask hard. They were ready to do so. Let's take a look at Arizona. Arizona was a key battleground state with a lot of uh, questionable, uh, the, the results were questionable with regard to the outcome of the election to the point where there's an audit currently going on in Mar an audit of the vote that's currently going on in Maricopa County. So how did AMAC members get involved there? We put out separate calls to action on several election integrity bills that uh, were working their way through the state house in Arizona. AMAC members responded by sending over 13,000 emails collectively to the state house. So what was the result? AMAC members were successful in getting private money removed from the administration of elections. They were successful in getting, uh, in stopping inactive voters from automatically receiving early ballots. And they also were successful in preventing the changing of election deadlines. These were three separate bills. They all passed the state house and they all were signed into law. AMAC members had a direct impact and were involved directly in getting these bills passed. That's That's so, that is just so wonderful. It really, uh, again, Andy, I was saying to, to, to some friends over the Memorial weekend, how much I love doing what I do. And it's because of our AMAC members, they truly give us strength and they guide us and they give us the ability to have a louder voice. And when our members, you said 13,000 AMAC members in the state of Arizona that actually participated in a call to action, that's tremendous. Uh, we have over 2 million uh, patriotic you know, Americans that are part of AMAX group. And it's so easy, so easy to get involved, Andy. Um, I'm going to get to that question to you in a minute. I want people to understand how easy it is for people to get involved. And it's not hard work. It's pretty easy work because we make it easy for you. We try to do everything we can so that um, so that it's 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 simple and that you have a, an easy way, a guide. Here's what we need you to do. Send an email. Here's the email address. Here's how to do it and so on and so forth. But Andy, you know, you talk about these great victories in Arizona, and they're tremendous. And again, I want to emphasize these um, changes that we're seeing in states are, are being put in place primarily because states saw that there was a disaster in the um, in the presidential election. Uh, you don't have to believe that there was fraud to understand that we need to clean up our voter rolls. You don't need to believe that there was fraud to understand that fraud occurs. It just does. It's, you know, sadly, it's it, it's in all things, right? We see that in all things. And you don't need to believe that, that the election was stolen to understand that we need major reform. Yes, and this has yes. been talked about for years. And the Democrats spoke about it years ago when it yes, benefited yes. them. When Hillary Clinton did not win, they talked about election reform, didn't they? Yes, and they so, did. And so here now these states are saying we need to ensure that future elections are free and fair, that we do not have any, um, you know, people voting, that the machines are working, uh, that that ballot harvesting is 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 not um, occurring as a means of, of fraud. 
And so these are very good things that they're putting into place, but it couldn't have been that easy. You must be running into some roadblocks throughout the process. Can you share with us some of the roadblocks that you've been facing throughout all of this uh, in, in Arizona, for example, and other states? Yeah, absolutely, Rebecca. Now, we've had a lot of success in, uh, in Arizona. We've had success in Kentucky. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, the other successes that we've had throughout the country uh, in Kentucky. And, and I'll get to the roadblocks because there have been some roadblocks. In Kentucky, AMAC members flooded the Senate there with telephone calls and they forced the election integrity uh, bill onto the, the a very crowded state legislative agenda. And the end result was the state uh, House and the state Senate passing election integrity reform, uh, an election integrity reform bill that com was comprised of enhancing the ability of state election officials to remove non-residents uh, uh, from uh, voter rolls. Uh, it also transitioned toward universal paper ballots statewide and expressly prohibited and penalized ballot trafficking or ballot harvesting. That bill passed and was signed into law by the governor. In Florida, AMAC, uh, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis passed uh, AMAC-supported Senate Bill 70. It was signed into law by him. And this bill requires voter ID and bans both ballot trafficking and mass mail-in voting. In Texas, AMAC members, get this, Rebecca, AMAC members advocated throughout the Memorial Day weekend in Texas. I love it to get Senate Bill 7, which is a comprehensive election reform bill passed. First, they called on the conference committee to get the bill out of, out of committee, which they were successful in doing. And then uh, it was sent to their respective state, uh, state chambers for a vote. You asked me about roadblocks. Well, we ran into a brick wall in Texas, but there's a silver lining to this brick wall. Texas Democrats in the state house walked out of the chamber on May, uh, right just before midnight on May 31st, which denied a quorum and forced the closure of the state legislative session, which ended on May 31st. So Republicans had no choice. So Senate Bill uh, 7 died there. But let not your heart be troubled. This will not last long. Texas Governor Greg Abbott is expected to call the legislature back for a special session to get this bill passed. That's expected to happen. And it's important to note, Rebecca, that this strategy of walking out of, uh, of their duty, uh, Democrats, they have, they've employed this strategy before. We can go back to 2003, where Democrats in Texas actually fled the state uh, over a redistricting issue. They were called back, and guess what? The redistricting issue passed. And if you remember back in 2011 in Wisconsin, Democrats walked out of the state house in protest of then Governor Walker's budget reforms. Guess what happened? They were called back into a special session, and that budget reform passed. Where this is expected to happen in Texas with Senate Bill 7. And speaking of roadblocks, uh, Rebecca, AMAC uh, members advocated in Arizona for a fourth bill that passed the state legislature. This was a bill that had to do with preventing the mass mailing of, uh, of ballots. And uh, AMAC members uh, consistently, they consistently answer our call to action. That's what's so inspiring. That's what's so yeah. wonderful to continue yeah. to do this work. This is, uh, this is very worthy work. It's a lot of hard work. Nobody is complaining at AMAC Action. This is actually our vocation. <laughs> We're happy to do it, but we're inspired by our members. So they, they advocated again, and they were successful in getting a fourth bill passed. But unexpectedly, inexplicably, and surprisingly, uh, Governor Doug Ducey vetoed that bill. Now, the, the scuttlebutt, if you will, or the, the, the uh, conjecture is that uh, he vetoed this, along with about 20 other bills, uh, in protest, that he was not satisfied with a budget issue that uh, w that the House and the Senate were were dealing with. So, uh, in in some kind of quote unquote protest, he vetoed a slate of bills, and unfortunately, that fourth election reform bill was included in that veto. So we're still working, and there's another Senate bill in in Arizona that we are working to get passed as well. So the roadblocks have been there. Fortunately, not that many. And it's really exciting to see how motivated these state houses are, Rebecca, to get election integrity done, uh, uh, to get election integrity legislation done ahead of uh, what the uh, what the federal government wants to do with S one and H R one. Yeah, and so again, just to remind people that are listening, there's work that AMAC is doing on the 
uh, state level, in the state level, on the state level, because we're there. We've got our AMAC members that are in all 50 states. Uh, and then we're doing work at the federal level. And um, we're in Washington. We're on the Hill. We're, we're talking. We're, we're, we're doing uh, Skype video and all kinds of um, uh, um, face-to-face you know, doing it sort of online still, unfortunately. Uh, and so this is the this is the great work that's really been paying off. I want to remind people, uh, you might be saying if you're listening, oh boy, I wish I could call my represent. I wish I could call my senator. You know, I live in the state of Arizona. I'm in Texas. I'm I'm in Florida. I, you know, there's a lot going on here. I want to just give remind people, and maybe we can put this up on the screen. If you go to our website, amac.us, on the left hand side of the page, there is a navigation bar with different categories. Look for the category tools and resources. You'll see a choice. Find your representative. You'll see it, you'll see it right there. Find your representative. If you click that, it brings you to a page and it's so simple. You just simply put in your, your state that you live in, your, your address, and it'll give you everybody that's connected, every, every lawmaker, every representative, your senators, your congressmen, and their contact information. Uh, the information that we have is there. So go to our website. And I want to make sure people are receiving these calls to action, Andy. Um, when people join AMAC, or if you renew your AMAC membership, I encourage people to sign up for those notifications uh, because, you know, we need for you to opt in to receive the email call to action. And this is typically how we'll communicate with AMAC members uh, is we will send you an email and let you know what what type of, of an event or call to action is, is upcoming. Uh, did I miss anything there, Andy? Anything on the AMAC action site that we can share with these folks? Because, boy, do you have a lot of good information there, too. Well, we just ask people to check in on that site because, as you mentioned, there's a lot of good information and it's constantly changing. This is not a static environment we're dealing with. This is a very dynamic environment. A lot of these state uh, legislative sessions are finite, okay? They're not in session year-round, and they don't come back as often as the federal, as our federal representatives do. Uh, but the governor can call them back. Uh, for special sessions, but typically these are short sessions. These are part-time jobs in a lot of states. Now, there's some states where that's an exception, like in Pennsylvania and New York, where they're they're much more often. They're, they're larger states, and they're dealing with a lot with many more issues. But these are part-time jobs. Uh, these state legislators they go in and they do their duty allegedly. Okay, most of them do their duty, but then they go back to their uh, to their jobs and their families and their and their personal lives. So uh, and and so there's a there there is a sense of urgency among the states to get this to get legislation passed. AMAC has been working, and I and I just wanted to point out Pennsylvania and Michigan are two key states right now where there are many bills, particularly in, in Michigan, being considered right now. And we are working with both legislatures to get reform done there. In Pennsylvania, it's going to be a, uh, and Michigan both, it's going to be a, a tall order. Uh, we are not discouraged. But I was told, uh, working with the legislature in Pennsylvania, that the bills there uh, or the election laws there are so bad, they are in need of reform to the point where Democrats are even agreeing to take a look at election reform in Pennsylvania because of the desperate need for that to occur. So, you know, we're targeting states where we think and where we saw a uh, huge impact in questionable election procedures this past federal election. And we're working very hard and we're working in concert, hand in glove, if you will, with the legislature to, uh, to assist them in getting good reforms proposed and then passed. That is great. And it's important today more than ever. And for people listening, we're all aware of the major changes that we've seen over the last six months since Joe Biden has been our president. And uh, some of these things, um, for example, uh, the um, the fact that it's been that, that they opened up the border and they're saying that the border is closed. And I want to shift here for a reason, uh, because there's so much that AMAC is, is focused on and working on. And uh, we are prioritizing based on AMAC members. You folks tell us these are the important issues that you want us to work on. We understand that election reform is is of top priority, as is immigration reform. Now, I want to take a moment and pause because um, where do you start? First of all, it's over 70 days since Kamala Harris has been to the border. Uh, it's actually, uh, let me rephrase that. It has been 70 days since Kamala Harris was appointed the border czar. She has not been to the border. 
I don't think she's been to the border. I, you know, she went to the border when when Donald Trump, uh, you know, just to take pictures and and then to go back and say, oh, look at this bad, terrible Trump who's who's um, holding up all of these children. But it's gotten so much worse. And the administration is ignoring it. And they've got their people out there saying the border is closed. We know that's not true. Uh, folks should have all received the AMAC magazine. This is a bi-monthly magazine, another great reason to join AMAC for $16 a year. We lay it out right here in the AMAC magazine and explain to you the real facts. But um, we have this massive illegal immigration that's occurring right now. And the reason why I want people to think if you're listening, I want you to think about this. When we have illegals coming over into this country that don't understand the heartbeat of America, because they weren't raised uh, learning the Pledge of Allegiance, they weren't taught about um, Jefferson and Washington and Adams and Abraham Lincoln. Uh, they perhaps didn't have um, families that immigrated over to America fleeing um, uh, coming over, by the way, legally in many, many cases, such as the case for me, perhaps for you as well, Andy. Uh, my grandmother came over. She went through the legal process from Hungary and uh, other family from Germany. And then I've got actually roots here in the United States going back pre-Revolutionary War and two uncles, uh, they're you know, five times great uncles who fought uh, and uh, others that fought in the Civil War on the side of the North, which is a wonderful thing. But I have this great rich history. It was passed down from generation to generation in my family. And I was brought up to love America. Uh, I hang a flag on, uh, outside of my home. So when this country gets into trouble and um, our country needs brave men and women like you and I, Andy, I won't hesitate to do whatever it is that I can do to preserve the freedoms that make America so great and the very reason why people come to America and not Venezuela, because they could go that way too. Uh, but they're coming here. So they, they're coming here because they love our freedoms, yet our freedoms are under attack and our elect the, the integrity of our, of our elections are under attack because if you allow illegals to come over and vote and they have no love for our country because they just haven't yet been assimilated into our, our country and they're instead being taught things like critical race theory when they are fi finally put into a school system, um, we're not building a future generation of American people that are going to be willing to do the things that people before us did. And, you know, here we are coming up on D-Day, January, I'm sorry, uh, uh, June 6th. And it's, it's a time, we just came out of a beautiful weekend of remembrance, Memorial Weekend. And it's a time where I really pause and say, I just love this country so much. I hope everybody who comes in here loves the country as much as we do. If we let people come in and they're bringing, and they're coming and these are bad people, folks, not all, of course, not all. But we understand that the vast majority of people that are coming into this country are bringing drugs with them. They're being paid to carry and drop children into the country. And so they're treating children like baggage. And um, we see it. We, we, we see what's happening. And it, it just breaks my heart that uh, Kamala Harris has not cared enough about America or American people to want to check out with her very own eyes what's going on, ignoring the situation. So, Andy, I know that um, we will be supporting any legislation that really looks to improve the immigration process. And I think that illegal immigration, uh, we, we understand, look, it wasn't perfect. It shouldn't take somebody, you know, $100,000 in 10 years to make their way into America. We've got to make it easier for people to get into this country. But we can't even begin to introduce sensible immigration reform when we ignore the atrocity that's occurring right now, and it's hurting people and homes and businesses. So, uh, you know, I wanted to turn to you for your thoughts on how AMAC members are, what, what, is, what is the feeling of our AMAC membership as it relates to illegal, illegal immigration and on a state level uh, in the future? I know we've got so many initiatives. This is something that we certainly won't ignore. Not at all. 
Not at all, Rebecca. And our, again, our members, and if uh, AMAC members go to our stance on key issues, you'll see a section on immigration. And our members agree with us that we believe you can come to this country, but there's a process. Please follow the process. And you did mention that this process can be flawed, and we recognize that. So we believe in sensible uh, immigration reform. That's and right. no, no, one, no AMAC member is going to argue that, okay? They are concerned about what's going on at the border. And we know that, Rebecca, based on the legislation that we've supported last Congress and legislation that we're looking at this Congress, we see the reaction when we put a support letter on the website, uh, when we support a specific immigration reform or tightening security at the border bill. And it's always been positive. AMAC members are not opposed. They recognize, they learned their history. They know that America is a melting pot, but in the same same breath, they also recognize the tragedy, the human tragedy that is occurring at the border. And they are outraged. They are outraged at uh, this vice president who has done nothing to address it. It's yes, it's it's alarming for American citizens, but there's a human tragedy with these poor children being dropped off unattended, being used as chattel, as bargaining chips. If this is easily recognizable by you, by me, and by every AMAC member, you don't have to be a, a immig an immigration specialist or some kind of uh, thought leader on, 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 on immigration to recognize what's going on at the border. That's and right. And it's and it's it is it's heartbreaking. It's sad. We see these young children coming over seven years old, nine years old, left all alone, saying they left me. And we don't know how many have passed away. We don't know how many have drowned. We don't know how many have been beaten to death, uh, abandoned, abused. We just don't know. Uh, we, but what we do know and what we do see is enough for every person with any type of common sense to recognize that we need to do more. And so what we're doing, folks, is we are getting the truth out there. We're doing that on our website and via our AMAC News app, which you can download on your smartphone to set up notifications to get the news. Because if we can educate the American people, uh, because mainstream media isn't, you know, they, they really are not. And there's, there's an elite group of people at the tippity top that want uh, people to believe a certain way so that they can gain more power and more control. And so AMAC is, is committed to bringing you the truth. We're going to do that through the AMAC magazine. I showed it to you before. Everyone should receive that. If you didn't get your copy, it'll be coming in, in just days. Um, go to our website. We've got a plethora of material up there on everything from election reform to immigration to Medicare to Social Security. Andy, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. This was so important for our members to hear exactly what it is that we're doing. And if you haven't joined uh, or renewed your AMAC membership, you ought to do so because your $16 a year includes you and a spouse. You'll save big time on uh, steep savings through uh, things like travel and uh, discounts on auto insurance and home insurance. But the, 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 bigger, uh, the bigger, I think, uh, benefit of being an AMAC member is that you give us a, a strong voice in Washington and at the state level to get things done. Andy Mangione, thank you again for joining us today. For all of you listening out there, thank you for joining AMAC's podcast, Better for America. And we look forward to having you back with us again next time. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Better for America podcast. To learn more about AMAC and all it has to offer, visit us at www.amac.us.